Bull Nanza Stud Services presents Bull Nanza Bull Chat. Here we'll be bringing you reader spotlights as well as bull stud news and our famous bull chat. We'll be talking about some of the best bulls in the industry. So join us here weekly at Bull Nanza Bull Chat. Find us at bullnanza.com. So, welcome to this episode, episode three of Bull Nanza Bull Chat. You have a treat today because you have our very own Miss Mariana Calloway. She is our lab manager here and is one of the finest people in the world and is absolutely outstanding at her job. So without any further ado, but before I introduce her, there's going to be a lot of info today. Uh, after we talk a little bit, she lets you know what we do. She's going to get into some stuff that's a little scientific on how this THPHA and particularly DS works. We'll go into the details of the effects that you'll get from DS. I know it's kind of new and not been explained very well, but today you're going to get that explanation as good as we know it. So, good morning, Mary. Good morning. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, you bet. Well, you're here every day. I mean, yeah, kinda. I am here. I'm happy to be here with all of y'all. But not every day you have to put on makeup and do your hair yeah, and do the whole thing. it's a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so tell us just a little bit about uh, your role here and what you do. So I run the genetic defect testing lab. Um, that's mostly my job, except on collection days when I'm in the uh, semen evaluation lab. Uh, but that's what I mostly do here is I'm upstairs in the genetic testing portion. That's mostly what she does because it's way above anybody else around here's education level. So she says, get out of my room, get out of my lab, this is my domain. That's right, yeah. <laughs> it's easier that way. Right. Mm -hmm. So can you tell everybody just what we have to offer as far as these defects go? Of course, yeah. So we offer testing for PHA, TH, and DS. Um, and those defects are most commonly found in the club cap industry, but also in um, a lot of purebred breeds as well. Um, so they're important to test for, not only because um, specifically PHA and TH are lethal genes, uh, but DS, you can see some complications as well with that one. So, Yeah, and uh, the other pure breeds would be your Maine Anjou, your Shorthorn, Kianina, um, and they've I think everybody else has kind of steered clear of them, but uh, the thing is, they have some uh, positive correlated traits that go with them. So a lot of breeders will purposely leave these genetic defects in, which is uh, whenever they first came out about, I don't know, 15 plus years ago, and I was like, why would people leave a genetic defect in them, especially that's lethal? It kind of made me mad. However, then you see the positive traits that these carriers have, and it makes you kind of want to do the same. Right. Uh, some of the pure breeds are being proactive at trying to eradicate it from their breed, which is very understandable. But all the breeds that are heavy involved in show ring performance, mm -hmm. which particularly you find in the club calf industry, they want these genetic defects because of the positive traits that they get from these carrier animals. Right, it kind of makes them superstars if you play it right. Yeah, it goes from model to supermodel. Uh, that's right, yeah. So why use Bull Nanza for your testing needs? There's a couple other companies in the United States that do it. Right. Why use us? Well, uh, currently we are the fastest in the world, and I don't say that just because I'm the one doing the testing. What's your turnaround time? Within two weeks. So Whenever we get sample in. Right. From with, the time I get the sample in the mail, within two weeks you're going to have your results. And we're pretty awesome. proud about that. We work hard to make that happen uh, with each and every client. Um, there's also the possibility of schedule for a rush. Yes, uh, a rush fee. Um, so if you get in a bind, you're needing testing done as soon as possible or yesterday. Uh, we do offer a rush test fee um, where I can get your, your results within 24 to 48 hours, depending on if it's blood or hair. Um, and, and that's... It takes a lot of uh, scheduling and work on your part to get that done. So that is something that you would need to let us know in advance. Right. Um, right. It's to kind be able of to get a, that uh, all nighter type deal. Yeah. Like I'm here pretty late and get here pretty early, just to make sure that y'all do get the results when you need them. Um, 
So the cool thing is, and, and not necessarily cool, but just uh, to brag on Mary a little more, the process that we go through to get your results is not taking a sample, plugging it in the machine, and waiting for it to pop out an answer. Right, I wish. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much Mary is the machine, yeah. and she pops your sample into different things and, and does some really scientific stuff to come up with your answer. And the cool thing is our process, there's no error. If there's an error, it just simply won't produce a result. Exactly. Yeah. So if Mary goes through this process with your sample, um, it is 100% accurate. Now, the inaccuracies that we've seen are simply reading your report wrong. Um, if they're line items, and if you swap a line in your reading or something, so you have to just be very cognizant of doing that when you're right. going over your report. Yes, and that is the good thing is that the results are very cut and dry, so when I give you a result, we're confident that that's what it is. So unless... Yeah. A uh, hair sample or blood sample was mislabeled or something happened along the way, a mix-up. Uh, what we hand you is... is Labeling okay. is so important because once we get that sample, we can only be as true and accurate as what you were in turning in that sample to us. Right. So if this sample is labeled Betsy and you accidentally put Susie's hair in there, your results are going to be reflective of whose hair was actually in there rather right. than what it said on the bag. Right. So whenever and penmanship with numbers and letters mm -hmm. and things, that's where I get tied up the most is, well, is that a four or is that a nine, you know? Yeah, yeah. so very clear, very precise. That way there's no mix-ups mm -hmm. once it gets into the lab. Um, okay, so whenever you receive phone calls from people, what is... Uh, especially when they get their results, what's probably the most common question that you get when trying to read and decipher the results you gave them? Yep, so the most common question I get at least probably once a week is the difference between a carrier animal and a positive animal in their results. A lot of people don't see positives because they're testing more for lethal traits. So if you have a positive animal, then that animal's dead. So they don't see that in their results as often as they would a carrier. But in the case of DS, you can get a positive animal and they can look completely normal or have mild uh, malformations to their body. Um, so when they get a result that says DS positive, they're like, well, does that mean it's a carrier or does that mean it's positive? So that's the question that I get the most and we'll explain that more in detail. Yeah, so whenever Mary gets you results on these three defects, you'll only have uh, three possible answers. One is that they're defect free. They're not a carrier. They don't possess it. They have in no way associated with it. Even though their sire may have been a TH carrier, it is possible for that animal to not be, correct? Yes. Yep. Okay, now, so that is clean. A carrier would be they carry it but don't physically show any negative traits to uh, uh, the, per right. the defect. Right. Oh. They don't express that yeah, defect because they also have a clean gene. So it's it gets complicated, but they can be a carrier and not show physically that they have it. How do you turn this thing off? Turn off, Siri. All right, so uh, we talked about a carrier, uh, and that would be just like humans, you and I. We could carry, say, the genetic defect of Down syndrome, and we would never know it unless we were tested. Right. However, if your uh, partner, husband, wife also carried it, then that's when it be can become positive right. and result in uh, like your child having Down syndrome. Right. I actually have a perfect example of this. I am a carrier for being tall. I just <laughs> don't <laughs> express that. Everybody in my family is tall, and I am not. So, But maybe there's a chance you maybe can make a chance. you a basketball player. Yeah, <laughs> maybe one day. <laughs> All right, so let's jump right into some hardcore information. And I'm going to start out making it simple. 
and cut and dry and very applicable to your breeding decisions and the results that you can get. And then from there, if it interests you, we're going to get a little bit more scientific with it, tell you how we come up with these percentages and these results. So if that interests you, hang with us. But right now, we're going to just kind of run some matings by you that you would uh, that are very popular, especially in the club calf industries or like your breeds that carry these defects, and give you the percentages of what you can see in your results. So we'll show you this quickly. The nerd in me is coming out. All right. So here, uh, Mary wrote mainly for DS. Now, DS, TH, and PHA are all very similar when you cross them individually on the percentages that you get of negative, carrier, and positive. So we're going to use DS since it's got a little bit more intricacies to it. Um, but just know that like this simple deal here, DS carrier to a DS free. So that would be in God we trust is DS free. You breed him to an animal that is a DS carrier and she's going to explain to you the results you can get. So 50% of the offspring will have a chance of being carrier or 50% of the time the offspring will have a chance to be free. 50% of the time the offspring will have a chance to be a carrier in this particular scenario. And for TH and PHA and DS all alike, if they are carrier animals, they should show no negative signs, negative traits, just appearance-wise looking at them that uh, would make uh, them undesirable for them to be a carrier. However, it's quite stark. It's the opposite. These genetic defects are left in these pedigrees because the correlated traits that come with being a carrier is extremely positive. That's when you get added bone, added look, added hair, added muscle. So... Mary, how did you come up with this 50-50 in this particular mating? Right, so using a Punnett score is pretty simple. Um, so let's say simple that for the smart people. this is your sire up here and this is your dam. So your sire would be a carrier animal that's indicated by the big D. And then, of course, he's going to also have a free gene, so that's your little Ds. So our dam is a free, so she has two little Ds. So basically, you're just going to bring these down. So we're going to bring this D down, bring this D down, and then we're going to go across. So this one's going to throw a little D and a little D. And then same thing here. So you're going to bring this D down, bring this D over, bring this D down, bring this D over. So that's where you get your 50% and your 50%. And at any time, guys, you can... Uh, hopefully this is all in the shot. You can uh, hit pause on the video and screenshot it, take a picture of it, write it down so y'all have uh, these results. But we're also going to explain them. So that is your probably most common DS carrier to DS3 mating. So here we have a DS carrier to a DS carrier. Now this is a whole lot more prevalent than people think because even before we started testing for this DS, it was there and we liked it because these DS carriers are extremely good looking and they're just show cattle. So more times than you think you're doing, you're doing this right here, a DS carrier to a DS carrier. Now what are our results, Mary, in this particular mate? So I'll go ahead and write it out for you on the So 25% of the time, you're going to get a DS positive animal. I don't want to block you from the microphone. Oh, yeah. 25% of the time, you're going to get a DS free animal. And 50% of the time, you're going to get a carrier animal. So that's what your percentages look like, and that's the probability of what's going to hit the ground when you cross these two matings. Okay. Now, 
I want to talk about this, and I understand it may get out of your shot, but like I said, you can pause it on there and go back and look. On a DS carrier to a DS carrier, we have 25% free, 25% positive, and 50% carrier. TH, if you get a positive, the animal, it, it's a lethal gene, the animal's deformed, the animal's going to die. PHA, same thing. If you get a, it's a lethal gene, if you get a positive, the animal's going to be deformed, the animal's going to die. The scary thing with PHA is they come out looking like a blowed up walrus. They weigh a lot, they absorb a lot of water, they're extremely malformed. I mean, they can weigh up to 300 pounds, so oftentimes it kills the cow as well. So, when you're messing with DS, it gets a little bit different because, one, DS is not a lethal gene. So whenever you're a positive animal and you possess the negative traits, you'll see some uh, deformities, particularly in the back legs. Mm -hmm. However, they can be functioning animals and, and do as good as they allow themselves to travel. Now, what's odd about DS is you can be DS positive and have zero negative physical traits. Perfect example would be uh, the new promotional bull, Take Me to Church. He has the most desirable back leg of almost any bull that you can use today. The shape of it, the size of it, it is incredible. And he tested TH clean, PHA clean, DS positive. So, even though he's a positive, he expresses no negative traits. Matter of fact, they're all extremely positive traits. So, what we're telling you is, in this scenario, where 25% of them are positive, that doesn't mean 25% of them are going to have a deformity. We're going to say you can cut that percentage to 50-50. So, basically, if you do this mating, DS carrier to DS carrier, you're going to have a 25% chance of getting a positive animal. However, only a 12.5% chance of getting an uh, animal with a physical deformity. Now that is not exact, and there's basically two reasons why that's not exact. The first being, we're both Aggies, so I'm telling you it's going to be pretty close. I have a bachelor's, she has a, master, a master's, neither one of us have a PhD. So, although we're trained and get our knowledge from those people, that's going to be a little room for error. The second and, and biggest thing is because even the ones with the PhDs don't know everything about DS in particular. Since it was not a lethal gene, there hasn't been as much money to fund figuring out every intricacy about it. So there's some things we just simply don't know, but this is what we've seen and is pretty close to being spot on. So what we want to do now is show you two things. Um, how your chances of having uh, animal with deformities increase when you're breeding a DS positive animal. And we also want to show you how they massively increase when you breed a DS carrier or positive animal to a PHA carrier animal. That is a big, big no-no. So stick with us. So we're going to work on this one now. So we're taking a DS positive animal and breeding it to a DS carrier animal. So this would be, say you take, take me to church, <coughs> excuse me, who we talked about is DS positive. Mm -hmm. And you breed that animal to a heat wave daughter. Heat wave would be a carrier so there's a chance that that daughter is a carrier, especially if you liked her and kept her around because that DS carriers would look good. So you take take me to church to your typical heat wave daughter, and this would be the probability of your results. So once again, we're just sliding down and sliding over, so we're going to get 50% chance you're going to get a DS positive animal, 50% chance that you're going to get a DS carrier animal. Pause it if you need to, screenshot picture. 
Now I want to visit with you a second about that maiden. So, cool thing about this mating, there was zero chance to have a DS free animal, which means you got zero chance to not get the positive traits that come along with being associated with carrying or being positive of DS. However, your chances of getting a deformity will increase in this scenario because 50% of the time they'll be positive. Now we can take that, split it in half again because of a positive animal. We believe that the chances of getting a physical deformity in that animal that's positive is 50-50. So take your 50%, cut it in half. In this particular mating of a DS positive to a DS carrier, we feel like 25% of the time you will have a genetic or a, a physically malformed back leg in that animal. Typically, your DS malformities come in the ankles. Uh, mm -hmm. Some people call them tree climbers, yeah. um, and they'll kind of have a, a curvature to that back leg, and it's it's fairly undesirable. But those animals still can grow out and produce if you baby them and manage them. Right. Yeah. And it's not saying that when you breed those animals, they're going to throw a crooked back leg. They're only going to throw it if it attaches with a DS positive uh, result in that offspring. Right. <clears throat> Alright, let's hit this other mating. A DS positive to a DS free. So this would be, uh, let's say, we go take me to church to a outstanding and God we trust female that is DS free. So, letters over. You're going to get a carrier 100% of the time. So, from what we've learned, let's give you the screenshot. All right. From what we've learned, don't be scared of this mating, kind of desire it. So, we have. Zero chance of getting a positive. Yep. So in theory, should have zero chance of getting a deformity. Yep. And also have zero chance of getting a clean one, which some may view that as negative. But if you're in the show industry, these carriers, I'm telling you, these DS carriers are good stock. Um, in my personal operation, I never really uh, influenced my herd with TH or PHA. Whenever we started this particular company, um, we tested everything. I'd never tested for DS. The results came back, and 75% of my donors were DS carriers. Yeah. And it's I, we have been selecting for this trait without knowing we were selecting for it for many years. Yeah. It goes back heat wave, carpe diem, uh, milkman, all of the big dogs, they were DS carriers. So use caution and be smart in breeding. However, I wouldn't necessarily fear this DS deal. Now, this next mating, I'm telling you to fear it. Whenever you cross DS carrier or positive anything with DS to anything that's a PHA carrier, you're asking for trouble. Here's the science behind why. Yep, so PHA and DS are found to be on the same gene. So they interact differently than two independent genes. So when you cross an animal that's a PHA, let's say we cross a PHA carrier and get a PHA calf, but that calf is also DS carrier, I don't even know the percentage, but more than not, you're going to have a calf that has severe deformities, way more than just a DS positive crooked back legs. Um, front legs are crooked, back legs are crooked, sometimes they don't have a tail, these calves just... Sometimes, sometimes they'll even, or let's go through these percentages real quick, and then we'll set the board down and visit about that. Maybe. Yep, yep. So, same thing. So, we're going to take a PHA carrier. What, so, so, what she has here is a PHA carrier and a PHA carrier. Knowing that this is a lethal gene, guys, you never do this. Never, never do this. However, especially with PHA, it's just so dangerous because it can kill the cow. Now, Whenever you take a DS carrier and breed that to a PHA carrier, even though that PHA carrier is clean of DS and the DS carrier is clean of PHA, 
I'm not worried about that. What I'm telling you is you basically just did this mating, DS carrier to DS carrier, and PHA carrier to PHA carrier on the same count. So even though I think my DS situation is this, because let's say I take um, Standout, a new bull of horns that's really popular. We have real good calves out of. He's a DS carrier. Okay, and we have uh, this Irish whiskey female that we're going to breed him to. Now, Irish whiskey was PHA, so if we really like this female, chances are she's PHA as well. And stemming from Irish whiskey, probably out of the Griswold operation, got Angus on the bottom, so we're not going to have any DS. So if you take Standout, DS Carrier, PHA Clean, and breed to this Irish Whiskey Angus female that's a PHA Carrier and DS Clean, it's not this to, it's not this scenario. It is a DS Carrier to DS Carrier, PHA Carrier to PHA Carrier, and these results, guys, are scary. Can you run through them real quick for us, Mary? Yep, so if you're breeding a PHA Carrier to a PHA Carrier, 25% of the time, you're going to get a PHA positive, and that's a dead animal. So, we don't want that at all. 50% of the time, you're going to get a PHA carrier. So, um, I'll come back to that in a second, but remember that 50%. We're not so much worried about this 25%, but for me, when I'm crossing a PHA carrier with a DS carrier, I'm not going to gamble with this 25%. That's too low of a number for me. So we're going to focus on this 50% PHA carrier, and then look at this when we cross the DS carrier to a DS carrier, and we got 50% DS carrier. If you get a DS carrier and a PHA carrier in the same animal, that's when you have problems. That's when those serious... You basically, you have this chance in this particular mating on your PHA side. You have this chance in this particular mating on your DS side, and then you can make a whole nother one of these squares for this carrier to this carrier. You're basically, it boils down to your chances of having a deformity are around 80%, and this is a deformity that looks like PHA, looks like DS, looks like them both combined, or they can be a carrier and appear to have no deformities, but that drops to 20, maybe 15% in this particular scenario. So be very, very cautious whenever you're crossing DS and PHA. Matter of fact, it's just simply not recommended. Right. And, of course, these numbers are just what we've seen personally and what I've discussed with Dr. Beaver, who has taught me pretty much everything I know about these defects. Um, so, of course, within an operation, those numbers percentage-wise can vary because I'm not going to hit the lotto 50% of the time. Colton's not going to hit the lotto 50% of the time. Some years, your numbers are just going to sway one way or the other. So, And that gets into a whole other math problem that I was not a very big fan of math. <laughs> However... These, these percentages that we gave you, if you have a flush of one of these matings and get 10 calves and you're like, well, heck, 50% of them weren't what you said they are going to be, each individual calf has those percentage probabilities to become what it's going to be become, and it has no correlation to what the next calf is or the next calf is. Each right. calf has those percentages. those percentages to become what it is going to be, the entire group. This is not what the percentages will be. However, there's a math problem to figure that one out as well, but yeah. above my pay grade. <laughs> yeah. So, very informative. Yeah. I hope smoke's not coming out your ears, but you can I rewind. Hope you're not asleep. Yeah. <laughs> rewind this. If, especially, guys, if y'all are intent on breeding and want to know, we just wanted to inform you. We get this question a lot, we have to give this explanation a lot. So we wanted to kind of get it on recording yep. so we can go back and you can reference it. Uh, you can take the visuals. And obviously, there's more scenarios than this. If, you're in a, if you have a certain scenario that you'd like to contact us with and want to know the percentages, 
we'll be more than happy to go through that with you. So uh, I encourage you to call either I, Jason, or Mary if you have any questions on uh, what we're doing here at Bull Nanza, which is genetic testing with Mary, uh, bull collection here with Jason, Matt, and I, and also uh, semen sales. We would like to serve you in any way possible. Absolutely. And we thank Mary for doing her hair and getting <laughs> on today's episode of Bull Nanza Bull Chat. Yeah. Now, Mary, we got to close it out how Matt and I closed it out. All right. See if I can remember this. I got to remember our slogan, too. I didn't do it with Brock. Actually, we filmed Brock's before we got into Matt. Right. Here on Bull Nanza Bull Chat, we thank you for joining us. Where we're just talking some bull. Ow!